Okay. Several people have just said that they're sad okay. that this is the last session, Lorelei. Ah, oh, well, there will be more sessions in the future, um, either with me or with other institutions. So don't worry. And I'm gonna, I have some different things I'll tell you about. I have some recorded classes that, um, that are available. Okay, let me share screen this. So one of the first things I want to talk about quickly, um, because I get so many questions about this. So uh, <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm, I'm used to teaching, uh, well, actually I'm teaching a lot of adults recently, but for some reason I was like, all right, <laughs> ears open, eyes up. I don't know why I thought that, but my apologies. So um, here is what it looks like. If you have, um, this is what the Google Drive looks like. If you have joined any of the classes, just this one or the first one or all of them, it should look like this now. What I did during the course of four weeks was I added each workshop file so that, um, so that there is a central place for you to get everything. Now, when we click, and I'm, I apologize for those of you who this is, you know, you know how to use it, but I just want to go through this to make sure. So click on any of the workshops, and then you usually come to something that looks like this, class handouts, presentation, class recording, photo references. I'm not sure why, but so many people keep asking me about the class recording. It's there. So please just be a little bit more vigilant. Um, I can't. I can't answer all of the emails I get regarding this. So you just have to kind of go through it and check it out and see what's there. Um, this is this class. Right now it's a little empty because the class hasn't finished yet. I made a distinction between all of the plates because there were just so many at, uh, that Leighton House provided for me. So I wanted to keep them separate because they're not all necessarily Damascene. They're Isnic and there's some other things mixed in there too. And also, um, you know, some on-site photos. And then these are the references mainly for the class today that I used or I thought I was going to use. Um, actually, just quickly, I'm sure, Sarah, these look familiar to you. They do. These <laughs> are some of the panel or some of the tiles from the tile panel we made at the Museum of Islamic Art. This is also the um, part of the coloring page also, this pattern, and hopefully a pattern I'll teach uh, soon, because um, I know a lot of people are interested in it, but this one's a little bit more involved as I was saying before. Um, so yeah, these, just to put this in perspective, these are beginners. These are people who hadn't, you know, painted on ceramic before. And it's just really, really lovely, the variation that you get within the tiles themselves. Um, so yeah, those are there for you to check out, for you to look at. And this pattern is at Leighton House. So um, another, not just at Leighton House, you have a few other places, but um, definitely within the Arab Hall. It is covered in this. And let me go back. Oh, here we go. And is there anything in the chat I should answer? Or? No, there's just one that somebody said about copywriting on the images if uh, they need, if they want to use it. Uh, it says, can you, can you, because do you remember last week you said about the copywriting? They said, could you just clarify again in case they want to use them? Uh, yeah, basically don't use them unless they're for your own personal use. Some of these photos come from different museums like Leighton House or uh, Museum of Islamic Art who have given them to me as an instructor to use. Some of them have come from, and usually I have a little code that represents where they've come from. So MET is M-E-T, A-G-K is Aga Khan. AGM, sorry, I don't know, AGKM, something like that, Aga Khan Museum, um, the Pergamon, whatever, there, there is a little code I put on it for myself. It's not actually for you guys, to be honest, it's for me because I'm, I'm writing a, a second book at the moment on surface patterns. So um, generally, if you go to somewhere like British Museum or to the VNA, you can download these, but they're only for personal use. Uh, or they have specifications. So 
Uh, I would definitely say um, you can use these for your own personal use, for your own education purposes, but do not use them. Um, I'm just saying for you, because if you were to use them and publish them somewhere or use them publicly, you could get a little slap on the wrist or worse. I don't know. Okay. So, oops, oh, ruined the surprise already. Okay. So uh, welcome to class number four, the, four, the final class, unfortunately, uh, and the final of my classes for 2020 also. December is going to be a break from teaching, but definitely not a break uh, at all. Um, lots of stuff to, you know, plan for 2021. The topic for today is grapes and pomegranates. Um, as I showed you before, we had this pattern in front of us that has wonderful grapes and tulips drawing, uh, growing out of it. This is in the air pole. Uh, it's one of my favorite patterns also. I really love this pattern. It's, you know, quite whimsical. So let's get going. So actually, before I was going to say, um, I'm just asking myself, should I do this at the end of class? Yes, it's better at the end of class. I'll go through, uh, if you got email today, the proper email today, my apologies there with the, with the Zoom link, um, you'll notice that there's a discount code, and I'll explain that more at the end of the class. Just can you remind me, Sarah, to do that? Yep. So there's a little explain bit more the account code. Yeah, explain okay. the discount code. All right. Oh, discount code. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. So I want to talk first about grapes. And um, the class description talked a lot about um, different, different cultures, different religions that have a history with grapes, which is basically most of them. Um, you know, the Quran is not uh, singular in mentioning grapes. So one of the one of them that most people will probably think of when they think of grapes uh, historically is the Roman and Greek um, traditions. And so we have this lovely painting by Caravaggio in the late uh, 16th century. Uh, I was a TA in a Caravaggio class. So like it's a little bit of a, I don't know how to say, holds a soft spot for me. <laughs> um, so uh, we have, Caravaggio's Bacchus here, Bacchus, um, sometimes known as Dionysus or Dionysus um, within the Greek tradition, was the god of wine, winemaking, grape cultivation, fertility, ritual madness, theater, religious ecstasy, you name it, all of the gluttonous uh, <laughs> things, he was the god of. And then um, he was considered to have uh being worshipped between five uh, 1500 and one uh, 11,000 uh, before common era by the Mycenaean Greeks and then below that we have this really beautiful fresco from uh, a Theban tomb in Egypt also and I really love this kind of archway of the grapes it's really wonderful now the next one a little bit more wholesome um, now, I have kind of uh, brought this back into the traditions we're looking at, and that is, you know, through the lens of Islam and Islamic art. And grapes are actually mentioned in the Quran 11 times. I made some notes about this yesterday. They're mentioned in the, in the Quran about 11 times in three different ways, either as grape vines, grapes, or grape. So we have this wonderful little ayat, or um, what is ayat in English? Uh, sentence, line, I don't know how to translate. Worse, worse. Worse. Oh, thank you. Um, one second, how did that happen? I don't know, I'm trying to mute whoever it was. <laughs> okay. That might've been my bad. Anyways, um, so uh, verse from the Quran. Um, so we have, it is he who sends down water from the sky, which we bring forth with its buds of all plants. And from that, we bring forth the green shoots. And from them, we bring forth closed pack seeds. 
and from the space of the date palm, date clusters hanging down of gardens of grapes and olives and pomegranates, both similar and dissimilar. Uh, look at their fruits as they bear fruit ripen. There are signs in that for people who believe. So it's really interesting. We're talking about grapes and pomegranates. There are a lot of verses that include both grapes, pomegranates, dates, and olives as uh, being signs for, for the existence of, of a creator, of a god, um, just based on, you know, humans having the opportunity to watch them grow and cultivate. Okay, now shifting to pomegranates. Um, I didn't include the whole entire story of Persephone and the pomegranate, uh, but I have a little link on the bottom there, which is a short version of it. Here we have a picture of Hades and Persephone quite an interesting story about how um, after she was taken down into the depths of hell, technically, where, <laughs> where Hades was living, um, you know, after not eating anything for a very long time, she eats three, uh, not three, six seeds of, of the pomegranate. And um, yeah, it's quite a wonderful story. Uh, I saw it as a, as a, as, um, as a modern dance uh, exhibition, the Persephone and the Pomegranate. So uh, it's a really, really interesting story. I definitely suggest you read it. I can't go through it today just based on time, unfortunately, but I wanted to bring your attention to it that a lot of or flowers that exist within the Damascene tiles or vases or whatever it may be, plates, they do have a very long history um, that is respected by, you know, many different uh, religions and um, ethnicities, etc., and cultures. So here we have some lovely pomegranates again, um, and we have very similar verses. I said to you before, it's actually not the same. And uh, the part I will read is this here. Uh, he brings forth gardens, trellised and untrellised, uh, palm trees and crops different to eat, and the olive and pomegranates alike and unalike. When it bears fruit, excuse me, when it bears fruit, eat of it and pay with it um, of it upon the harvest day. Do not be wasteful. He does not love the wasteful. Um, and I apologize for the typos there. What's also interesting is the pomegranate is one of the things promised to be found in heaven. So, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, if we get to go, I guess. <laughs> so now moving on, now to look at some of the objects that we have uh, at Leighton House. As I told you before, we have this um, panel, but it's not just a small panel. There's quite a few walls that are covered in this um, 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 wall uh, tile panel, tile pattern, sorry. Um, so we have our grapes here, and then we have this dish here that has our pomegranates on it. Now, I believe there's something similar at the Museum of Islamic Art, isn't there? I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there's quite a few of these plates. There's quite a few of them. Sometimes this, this pomegranate, this dark figure that we have here, sometimes it's uh, this, it's sometimes labeled as an artichoke. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, because it's not a, it's really a very uncommon thing and um, wouldn't necessarily symbolically make sense, but to each their own. Here we have just some different plates that are at Leighton House, um, you know, arranged quite beautifully on the wall there. Lots of different patterns. Um, yeah, lots of different tulips, carnations, etc., from different time periods. You know, uh, some of them are from the late 16th century. Maybe some of them are a little bit older, maybe 17th, 18th century. And here we go, we are now at the grapes. Now the grapes, technically I should have put this in the beginning if we we're looking at things chronologically. Um, the grapes have a lot of um, 
uh, a lot of resemblance to Ming Dynasty uh, ceramics and celadon ware. If you look at, and this is something I failed to say to you, uh, <coughs> actually, is if you look at the rims on these plates, this is where you get some really, really beautiful um, patterns. This is the rock and wave motif. This one is, um, you can see it's an earlier one because in the Iznik style, it gets a little bit more stylized um and becomes a little bit simpler in in the rock and wave motif um than we have here and also one of the things that they took from ming dynasty is we have a rim an interior and a central motif so we can see that here we have the rim we have the interior and we have the central motif and then i can't remember what's next Ah, yes. So these are some pictures of my work, actually. Um, I really enjoy doing these. These are part of my master's work at the Prince's School. This one on the left hand side is one that um, was inspired by a lot of different motifs on many different um, on many different uh, plates that I found at the British Museum that were um, the Damascene style here. So I've got these really wonderful tulips that can be found on a washing basin at the British Museum. And then over here, this is number one of three patterns that I did on a 50 centimeter wide plate. That was the part of a series called Damascus Garden. So I've got some pomegranates here. I look back at it now and I'm like, I still hear this, um, quite elderly man who came up to me at the exhibition telling me it reminded him of crabs because of the legs coming out and now I can't unsee it and it's six, seven years later. <laughs> I just wish people would keep their opinions to themselves sometimes. <laughs> definitely, definitely, because I graduated in 2016 and seriously, I look at it now and I just see the crab. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being clever. <laughs> And the last one here. So I wanted to include this one. It's not specifically a Damascene, but we have these pomegranates as well. Looking back, I didn't really do anything with grapes, but we're, we're gonna change that today. We have got some stuff to do with grapes, but keep these in your mind. We have a few, we have two different techniques that we can add to our pomegranates. Okay. Everybody so, loves them, Lorelai. You're getting lots of wows and amazings. And <laughs> oh yeah, there is quite. Ah, oh, thank you very much. It's very nice of you. Okay, so looks like a spider. See, <laughs> like exactly. clouds. You can see anything. <laughs> exactly. As I said last week, there's there's a what's it called? What's it called? Pa paleo. There was a name for it, seeing clouds or saying something and something. Uh, one person just asked, how do you edge the drawings? Yeah. But what do you mean by edge? Those aren't drawings, those are ceramics, by the way. Just ah. as an FYI. So it's a photograph of the ceramic, okay. <laughs> Sarah says you do plates in January then. <laughs> so January we're designing plates. Today we're designing plates. Part of it. Oh, so thank you. Abhishek. I just wanted to show Harry, you. A few. Harry Dolia. Abhishek must have written it down last week. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you spotlight my my page? Yeah, doing it now. Yeah. Thank you. Because I've got some pictures from the British Museum, which um, unfortunately I only have them as film, not film. I only have them as printed copies because I don't know how many phones I've had since then. So. This is all I got. So you can see that really, sorry, that really iconic purple. Here, again, we have some more, sorry, we have some more um, pomegranates. See. Oh yeah, so this is the basin I was talking about with the tulips around the center that I was really inspired by. Here's a better photo here, a larger one. 
And other than that, I think we should get cracking. Let me see. Underneath what you're looking at is the handout for today, but I think maybe I like got on a tangent there and started talking about something else and forgot to get back to what I meant to say, which is classic for me. Um, so the reason why this isn't available yet is because I'm going to paint this with you guys today. This is like the proper paper to do it on. So um, yeah, we're going to do it at the same time, basically. That's what I'm getting at. Lorelai, um, I'm sorry to bother you. Can I just ask that one question about the edge again? You know, when you're on your ceramics, when you outline the drawings, you don't use quite a second. Do you use any raised paint or is it just a, a it's paint not raised, edging? No, it's, it's a special... Yeah. It's a special outlining uh, glaze. Um, okay, thanks. And just to answer, uh, yeah, Damascene is derived from Damascus. I got that question. Um, anything else? Oh, there's, this is one of my favorites. Like, I'm, I don't know, maybe because I like to design um, uh, tableware that I just keep thinking of how wonderful it would be to have this dish here. You see this? You could have mm. it at Thanksgiving or any kind of meal and wonderful, full of food and you take it off and it's gorgeous. I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. So. And as, uh, so also we, we use a ruling pen on something like a plate. Um, I have a plate here. I'm just trying to see. Um, 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 um. Give me a second. I have actual tiles, obviously. I am a ceramicist. I'm just struggling with the paper at the moment. Whatever. Um, I'm trying to think which one. At the break time, I'll get it because if I move now, I'm gonna adjust everything. So I'm kind of trapped in here, but I will show you the, the black outline materials. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to get one of the motifs ready. Um, you can see here this little motif. That's really the only one, sorry, this one here. That's really the only one you haven't learned yet. And uh, It doesn't take that long, but it's gonna, you know, we can use it on our uh, compass, pencil, ruler. Yeah, that's it. Am I freezing or no? Landscape portrait? Uh, does it, yeah, A, A4 is fine. Absolutely. You could even do it on a postcard size. It's not gonna be that big. We're just doing the motif first, actually. Um, yeah, I, I didn't send you the file for that, did I? No, my bad. Um, Okay, so just to get this, like, well, I'm getting my stuff ready. First circle is 2.5. Next one is 1.5 and then 0.5, just so you can write those down. Yeah. Yeah, this, this can be done on computer paper. It doesn't matter right now. This is just gonna be the rough one. And there we go. So. Yeah. First thing you're going to do is just draw a line like so. Do you want me to repeat them? No, no, no. I'm doing ah. it now. So it's 2.5, then 1.5, then 0 0.5. That's the radius, yeah. not the diameters. Yeah. So I'm going to double mine up so that you guys can see clearer. How it, the lighting I think is okay this time. Yes, much clearer today. 
I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to put my circle down here. Just to make this line a little bit longer. My line's a little short. Like so. Okay, so now we are going to divide this in four. So, and then on these lines here, beautifully clear today. The light's That's great. Yeah. That's super bizarre. I'm not, I have no idea. I will, the only thing that's different is my husband set it up. So I'm sure. <laughs> Don't tell it. <laughs> Poor guys had a rough day. Maybe maybe that'll actually make him feel better. <laughs> so you made it wonderfully clear. Touch of an angel. Oops. I was just about to say, speak of the devil there, because uh, for whatever reason, my line adjusted. <laughs> the same breath, isn't it? I think being inside all this time has made me at least I'm not sure about anyone else made me a little bit crazy so I think that's why a lot of people take the classes to sort of ameliorate the craziness and, and do a little bit of self-reflection and enjoyment <laughs> well I also take online classes but for, for different reasons we're doing some fabric design classes. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay, so we have our vertical and our horizontal. Now we have our little petals here. And so we're gonna do the diagonals through here and then magically, but not really, but uh, um, we're gonna have a circle that is divided in eight. Now, next part is 1.5. So we're gonna put a circle in that is at one and a half centimeters radius. Check my... If you're thinking mine looks larger than yours, that is definitely the case. I have doubled mine so that it's easier to see. Like so. Okay. All right. Do I need to wait a little bit? Yeah, I think I do. Okay. I'll wait a couple of seconds. Um, wrong direction. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm gonna get that. Okay. Lorelai. Yes, this motif does have a has a name. 
So there are three different uh, roses in the naturalist, naturalist style. I guess that's what the translation would be. Um, these are uh, definitely Damascene roses. Um, if you look in, I think it was class one, was class one roses? Uh, yeah, no, so. class two. Class two was tulips, roses, and hyacinth. Um, there are some pictures of natural Damascene roses. Like I took them of myself holding them. You'll see that this one that we're drawing today, um, it has that similar division of petals. So this is a Damascene rose. I'll write that up here. Yes, it is also used in Iznik. It's not just that, but for the sake of today, I'm calling it a Damascene rose. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna draw a circle in the center. Where are you doing the fabric design classes? Um, Domestica. Yes, you may. Here is the design we're doing right down here. This is 0 0.5. This one I've drawn in the center, it's just, you know, a little circle by hand. Okay, so next part we're doing is in these quadrants, yes. So in these two bottom eights, my apologies, not a quadrant, this and this one, this is uh, gonna be filled with these three petals. So I'm gonna draw the first one. It's gonna take up a third of the space, kind of like a very large teardrop shape, like so. Then we're going to do in that other third on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side. So we have something that looks like this. Now, this one here, you see you have an eight division. So basically, this, this motif really is quite simple. You just follow those lines we've made around. And then in this one, the exact same thing. And then in the outer one, the exact same thing. So wherever you have a division line, that's where the pedal stops. And you keep that pedal inside of the circle that's been drawn there. Oops, I was pressing the wrong one there. And then here we go, like so. And then the same out here. Like so. And that is the long and the short of it. This this motif here actually really is not so complex. It's not, um, you know, some like Hatai patterns and stuff like that can get a little. Oh, difficult.
Okay, so let me know if it's too early to move on to our plate. Just pop in the chat if you need a bit more time. Yeah. Yes to more time. So that's one vote for more time. <laughs> I think everyone's busy drawing actually. Okay. Oh, Marilla, you joined. Marilla's back in Qatar. So she's able to, to join our classes now. Great. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So, I hope you, can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why are there only three petals? This is stylized. You have lots of petals. If you um, if you've seen uh, a damascene rose in real life, you kind of have these petals that begin to fall off. So this is just a way to explain that kind of natural part. So with the different, I'll explain this. Absolutely, there should be a minimum number. You should be following the divisions that you have drawn originally, Farah. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, because we have a division of eight and we took up this quadrant, which normally would have had one, two, then you should have six here. And in the bottom there is three. Um, so just to answer Sarah, AKA Lily, <laughs> there are kind of three different views. I think I found another view of a rose somewhere. So maybe that's four. Anyways, there is this one as well. It's a side view. And then we have the bud, which I'm gonna show you how to do today while we're drawing. Kawathar, you should have eight divisions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we have this one here, which is the one we're doing now. Um, believe me, marigolds look uh, quite a bit different, maybe. <laughs> we did marigolds before. But anyways, it, it's, it's not so important now. Um, you know, after the class, you can go back and revisit. And then also, sorry, you have the, um, you have the handouts, which are gonna help you too. Okay, so let's move along onto our, um, our plate. I'm moving this over for now. So as you can see here, I have a few different aspects that we're gonna look at today um, from our plate. Just showing some of them here. And this will become more clear as we go through the class. So, exactly, exactly. Thank you for the wonderful reminder, Nikki. Okay, so basically, our circle that we're going to draw is going to represent the plate that, unfortunately, because of you know, unfortunately and fortunately, because if not, not all of you would have been able to take this class if it was, you know, on site in the UK or wherever I might be teaching. So unfortunately, we can't put it on a plate today. It's going to be on paper, but fortunately, you get to learn. So um, I am drawing, I am using A3 paper, but 
What is the dimension of A3? Landscape or portrait? Um, land, uh, it actually doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Um, I think this can fit on A4 if that's all you have. Let me just see. I'm really bad with measurements. No, it will not fit. No, it won't. If you have A4, it won't fit. But you could take two A4s together. Hopefully you have tape. No, you don't need to go with watercolor paper now. I would definitely say use a kind of sketching paper. That's going to make your life quite a bit easier. All right. So what I'm doing here, and I'm going to bring this back a bit so that you can see things. There we go. All right. So I'm just drawing a vertical line. So first draw a vertical line. This so is gonna be to the size or just down the, the whole page. And then um, I realized when I was doing this that uh, it's possible that your your compass won't expand this. Uh, this length because mine taps out basically at 13 centimeters um, and if you don't have an extension that is absolutely fine just do it as large as you can and you'll get what I mean in a second and I will try to make this as clear as possible so basically we have a rim and this is what we're going to work on we're going to make the rim um, and you'll see that the measurements are kind of a little weird and that is just, uh, so Angela, um, just listen to what I'm saying now. I just saw your comment. So do it as large as your paper can handle. Uh, centimeters, I can't do inches. Um, do it as large as your paper can, can handle. And then we're gonna, you know, bring the increments in for the rim based on what you have, all right? So, for those who are working on A3, do 13 centimeter radius. I'm gonna see if I can increase this a little bit, sorry. I will put it back. Okay. Yes, we're drawing on a new sheet of paper. Okay. Okay, so now what we're basically going to do is we're going to bring it in one or two mil. So in this case, if you have a max of 13, bring it into 12.8. If you're working on um, uh, a four size or eight and a half by 11, if you're in North America, then just bring it in two mils. I realize I just said an imperial and then a metric number. I'm Canadian, we're unfortunately messed up like that. <laughs> but bring it in two mils and then the next one I'm going to give you the instruction for okay so this is done by eye I've got my 13 I'm just bringing it in a little bit so you can see I've brought it in about two mils 
So just going around like that to create that kind of rim drawing. Next one, we're gonna bring it in like a centimeter and a half. Like, ooh, what happened there? Make sure you put your compass back in the right location, which I failed to do here. And then for this last one here, we're gonna bring it in like two mil again. You will understand the method to the madness by the time the class is done. Like so. So just think of a nice fancy dinner plate and basically that's what you've got. Oh, it's still okay for time, actually. Okay. Okay. So you guys get to vote grapes or pomegranates. Put it in the chat box. Both. No, you get to choose one. <laughs> Ooh, I think pomegranates is winning. Oh, yeah. Pomegranate is like, okay. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. So basically, why do we have this vertical line? Because generally, generally, these designs are symmetrical. I say generally. It's not always the case. A lot of the examples I showed you um some of them are asymmetrical or they follow a different plan but for day for today's sake we are going to make this symmetrical it's going to be easier on everyone so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move to the bottom here just give me a second um i will if we have time at the end i will demonstrate the grapes Grapes are really simple, actually, so I wouldn't I wouldn't put my time there at the moment, to be honest, like for you guys' sake. OK, so now at the bottom of our page. Just moving this up a bit, we're going to we need to anchor our design. We need to have a starting point. So what I'm going to do, if you've taken the other classes and done some clouds with me, I'm going to draw kind of a cloud in the bottom. Just slowly clouding or fluffing itself out like that. And now for me, normally what I like to do, I do in this step with the leaves, I do like to draw it freehand instead of having it be so symmetrical. So I start by adding some smaller leaves on either side. And I'm gonna add more details to these in the end. Maybe another one up here. Uh, Julie, I can see your hand up. Can you just put your question in the chat if you can and then I'll pick it up from there. The cloud is probably about it's exactly three, three centimeters. Yeah. How do I compare these drawings to Tessit? Uh, they're very different, actually. The motifs are very similar, but I mean, in Tessit, normally you have much less space. 
So we can we can get a lot more detail into these spaces um, than you can in Teship, but Teship is smaller, so it appears more detailed. If that makes sense. Okay, so that's the first part. My accent is getting a little weird. <laughs> it's late here. <laughs> um, okay, so up at the top, we're gonna do what is known as a rosebud or a gul, well, a side view of a rosebud. So basically what we do is we draw a U shape, like so. And that is approximately four centimeters from top to bottom. Like this? Yeah, just a wee bit's helpful, I think. Okay. Okay. All right, now we have a middle part here. This one is, the reason why I didn't include this is because this one is a little bit of an easier one. So uh, we follow this along to the midpoint and then we come back up like so. And then in the middle, oh, that's a little, we're getting in the realm of a tulip there. Give me one second. It should be thinner, actually, like so. And then we have these kind of half bumps that are in here. And these kind of represent the, um, what's it called? Petal? The, the petals inside, thank you, yeah. So now over here, we can put our blooming Damascene uh, flower. So this would be the time where you can transfer that flower you've just drawn to a piece of tracing paper. What, what did I say that was? Was that two and a half centimeters? Uh, yes, when you made the, the rose, yeah. Yeah, okay. Or what you can do for now, you can, with your compass in this area here, make a circle that's two and a half centimeters wide, just so that you know that's where you're gonna put um, your rows. Does the bud have to be a specific length beneath the line or just what feels comfy? What feels comfy. Okay. So over here, I'm just putting this kind of a comfortable distance. So it's not touching here. Is it visible? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, and it's not touching here. So this is the size of the motif you just made of the Damascene rose. So for now, for sketching purposes, I'm just putting that there. Now we're gonna make a pomegranate and I'm just bringing it into two centimeters, the radius. And this is quite simple, which is why we're gonna do it directly on the plate. So similar to how we just drew that, I am just kind of checking out, do I have enough room? I need a little bit more room for the tip of the pomegranate. So here we go. Like so. It's two centimeters, no, 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 Sarah, it's two centimeters, the pomegranate. I'm oh, sorry, that was a mistype on my part. Apologies, folks. Okay, so this flower here is gonna attach to this bud, like so. So that midline that we have already, they're, they're already attached. Now, now this one here, the pomegranate, I'm gonna attach it into the leaves, just with a very faint line at the moment. And then I'm gonna follow this out, like so and make the pomegranate kind of, I wanna call them lips, but I know they're not <laughs> lips. Um, it's basically where the flower was growing. The flower grew out of here and then at the end, the bud comes. 
So I don't know if we have any biologists in the in the chat group. Uh, Fayel says okay, so crown. Thank you, thank you. All right, so now we can get a, um, a few leaves in here. So the rose leaves kind of go out like this. And then we add in kind of the serrations. So you can have them be little scallops like I'm doing here. Or you can actually kind of make them more edgier. I don't prefer those just because, I don't know, I feel like I can't control them that well uh, in, a, in a small space, but that's just me. All right, so we have a leaf, we have the sketch for our rose, and we have um, one of our petals. I'm just kind of bulking that up a bit. Um, and I'm gonna do a sneaky leaf, a crossover leaf, like so like that. <laughs> ah, thank you again. You learn something new every day. Alex. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm doing the same kind of teardroppy shape like so. So I just neatly crossed it over and then the exact same thing. And I scallop up from the bottom just because I feel like it kind of gives a nicer effect, but you do what works best for you. Like so. And we'll come back to this, not to worry. And then also what's interesting is in the Damascene style, you'll see something like this, which I think is meant to represent the thorns. And you put that all the way down the stem. Like so. There we go. So our pomegranate, actually before I go that way. Huh, yeah, in here. So we're gonna do a smaller one. We're gonna have a smaller here, um, just for kind of contrast. So it's basically the same. You guys can do that in your own time. It's the same roses here, but I've just decreased the size and I'm decreasing it to, sorry about that, it's three. So one and a half. So the radius for that teeny tiny one. And I've written this on the sheet, by the way. So don't worry. On the handout, you will have it. So we have this teeny tiny rose in here. Has a little bit of an overlap with that stem, but that's absolutely fine at this point. Like so. And then, what else do I want to add? Huh, okay, here we have one. We have a little line coming up and we're gonna put a motif on that in a second. And then out here, we're gonna have one that's doing this, just kind of a bend. So this one is also going to be uh, a rosebud. The radius of the tiny rose is 1.5. Draw this one first and see how big it's going to be. So this little rose here is two centimeters length of the motif. And then we just do the same. We follow the U around. Like so. And we add in And then we're gonna have kind of some baby buds coming out here, like so. Oof. And 
then the same thing over here, we have another rows. Waiting over here. Yeah, that's not bad so far. Now there are a few different patterns that we can put inside of our uh, da, 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 pomegranate. Um, there's kind of a swirl technique, spiral, sorry, spiral technique like this, stacking on top, which is one of my favorites. But for this one, I'm going to do the, I don't know, Sarah, if you know what I'm talking about, what is this called? Scalloping? Scallop, yes, thank you. I just used that word, I can't believe it. I, <laughs> I misplaced it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So if you remember the plate I showed you that I did that was blue and red and white but had the um, pomegranates on it, this is one of the ones I used also. It's also, I think in the example at the Leighton House and also the one in the Mia's collection too. They're a similar pattern. And then you can put some different elements inside. It doesn't have to just be scalloping. You can even maybe add a little teardrop in there. You know, it depends on how zen you need your day to be as to how much detail you're gonna put inside of these little scallops. <laughs> One person says it looks like a pineapple. It does a bit. <laughs> what can I do? If there were hexagons, I could I could accept that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then maybe I'm gonna have a little kind of so this is like a little fan shape. It's like a baby kind of stylized pomegranate. So I've done this kind of fan shape, which connects here. Scalloped on the edge, and then I do a few more like so. Oh, thanks. That's very kind. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? Actually, yes. Sorry, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's done. It's not. So all of the fuss I made about getting <laughs> this rim. So we have to do something with it. On the handout that you guys are going to get, my apologies, I'm going to move this for a second. On the handout you guys are going to get from me, you're going to get like four different kind of patterns. That is a, by far, you know, um, a very, very, very small amount of the examples that exist. And I'm just trying to see if the book is closed and it's not. Okay, so. Basically, in any book about Isnik or Damascene plates or tiles or whatever it may be, you are going to see a lot of different rim patterns. Now, this one is Treasury of Turkish Designs. Um, if you've taken any of my classes, I've probably mentioned this to you. So, 
these are like highly stylized much more but it's a good kind of uh, collection of some motifs so here is exactly what I'm talking about um, Uh, I just saw what was written. No, this is not my book. This is. Um, I'm just getting. I'm just the reading name the comments. Stop writing nice things. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Treasury of <laughs> Turkish Designs. Um, this is not my book. My book is not ready yet, and you guys all need to start praying to God that something happens um, along with it. So these are some of the different patterns that can be on the rims of the plates. There's two, well, one, two, three, four. This is the rock and wave motif I was telling you about. Here are a few different variations of it. Here's another one down here too. Okay. So I'm trying to think here, which one do I wanna do? I can do a section of the rock and wave motif because it's a little tricky to get it looking right. The other ones that I've included are simpler in my opinion. You know, this is a flower with a little mini tulip. So I'll do the rock and wave motif. And if you wanna do like a flower and the tulip go right ahead, that's not an issue, but this is just mainly for educational purposes to make sure that if you want to do that, you can, you can. All right, so I'm just going to give myself a boundary line for this here. So basically, I'm just giving a quarter. And now I forget how to do it. My goodness. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where you start. Um, generally, I like to divide, I'm very organized, so, but I trust my eye, as I said. <laughs> so I kind of put a bit of a halfway point in between the two, like so. And that from here to here is going to be like one of the patterns. So I'm going to start over here. It's going to kind of look like a bit of a cloud motif like so, and then that's gonna come down and into a spiral like that. And then I put maybe three or four little spirals in there, like so. And now from here, this is how we get that like kind of classic shape from here to here, which is kind of like if you think of, you know, all of the kind of foamy bits of the foamy bits, bubbles, whatever you want to call it, of the wave kind of rushing. This is what gives that movement feeling. So I'm going to draw like a semicircle like so. OK, and it's coming up here and I've got you know, all that kind of sea foam. I'm making up these words as I go along, but I think that's basically what they're trying to do here. Like so. Then after about a centimeter, I am gonna draw another spiral and link it up to the top like so. And then this is where we get the rock. So the water is smashing up against this stylized rock, like so. And then I realize this line should be adjusted ever so slightly, like so. And then in the rest of this space, we just fill it with more spirals, like that. And then you start again with that kind of wave motif that comes down like so. Let me get that. And then 
then over here. And then we fill in this space with our spirals. And I don't know about you, but I'm the queen of drawing spirals. So I really enjoy this motif. And that is the rock and wave motif. Or the rock and wave motif. Sorry, that's my, that's my dad talking right there. Rock and wave. Obviously my joke fell on deaf ears. <laughs> I think everybody's concentrating on their drawing. <laughs> All right, so while you guys are, yeah, I <laughs> got it. Don't encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. My dad would be proud, that's for sure. Which is not a good thing when it comes to joking. All right, so the final thing, I am going to trace my, uh, am I? No, I'm not. I'm just going to draw it in freehand. So the last thing I'm doing is I'm putting in my Damascene uh, rose. And I'm basically just going to do the geometry there. You guys have already drawn it. The one I drew was larger. So just trying to locate that again. So if you guys have your, your rows ready, you can transfer that now. I'm just gonna draw mine in at the moment because that's just faster. Well, it's actually the same amount of time. Um, so transfer your, your rows in this location. And sorry, everybody heard Twitch. <laughs> I thought I'd got the All right, so bear with me. You guys can add in some of your extra details to your leaves while I'm getting mine going. Uh, Afreen has a question. She said that uh, if she has a lot of extra space on the diagram, can she fill it with little buds? Sure, why not? Yeah, you could do some of these um, smaller roses, some leaves. Go ahead. Yeah, this is your this is your um, 
pattern, so why not? Like, uh, just to answer that question, um, and unfortunately, Afrin, you're going to be a little bit of a guinea pig because of that type of question, but <laughs> I don't mean anything by it. Just keep that in mind. So um, in these classes that I'm teaching here, these are open and to the public. I do teach traditional Iznik and um, Islamic art classes where it's a lot more rigid and a lot more structured because those kind of foundations exist. Now, part of the reason why I really love doing the Damascene classes, especially with, with students that you know don't do this that often, is because it allows kind of a level of freedom to the student um, because you know there it's a little bit more whimsy is kind of afforded to to the student. Um, you know you can add things in here or there and but when you look at the ISNIC, it's much more standardized and much more structured. So. There's my rules. Um, they would look abandoned. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Okay, so I'm not gonna add in this little friend here for now, just because of time purposes. Now, let's take a five minute break. And there was, there was something I said I was gonna find. What did I say I was gonna find in show? Ah, the the what's it called the original actual uh tile stuff yeah so oh, yes. five minute yeah. break the edging of the of the of the um, tiles yeah so here's one. Oh, I love that one and i don't know if i have the exact place that I want to show you. I have, I have a black outline here. Okay. I have a few oh, things I can show you. There was a question about the leaves for the pomegranate. Should pomegranate leaves yes. be a particular shape? Um, yes, and you guys caught me not remembering what pomegranate leaves look like when I was instructing. So I'm also going to sneakily reference <laughs> my own drawing, which I just found it. Okay, here we go. Yes, and I have my drawing again. So that one's a little bit more traditional where you can see the black going on there. Um, Everything has been outlined. If it wasn't outlined, things would bleed together and it would not be a good day. You can see here, this was a test tile. Part of the reason why I have it and some of the stuff moved. Now we have, so here's a rim as well. These are my own works. These aren't, I'm not professing to be a, to be an ISNIC master when I'm doing stuff like this. These are my, my own drawings. So here's a, lovely Arab miniature lion. Ha, huh. tracing and putting patterns on your own uh, ceramic plate, that is a whole other class, completely different. Um, you can draw it freehand with pencil, just make sure you don't do it with mechanical pencil. Do not do it with mechanical pencil. There is polymer wax inside of the little tiny um, leads. So you're gonna get an ugly kind of resist that you don't want. Here's a, a peacock. So we get like the same outlines here. Oh, Sarah? One second. I dis I got kicked out for reasons I don't quite know, but I I'm back. Oh, that's super weird. Yeah, because it just says Sarah is the house now. No, no, no. It just uh, it just closed completely. And 
Okay. Yes, I found the pomegranate. So, okay, take two more minutes. I'm going to stretch my legs a little bit. And I'm just gonna turn my camera off for a second so I can do my stretching. Whilst Laura and you're going to have to let me back will... in, actually. That's okay. <laughs> Whilst Lorelai does that, I will just post in the chat her Instagram page and um, the Oneness campaign for Leighton House and the Leighton House YouTube and all the other things. Okay, Oneness is, it, is okay. finished. I'll leave that one out yeah, there, but, but I'll can... put the rest in. <laughs> yeah, and I will... Give me a second. Let me open my email. One second. I'll put um I'll put the, the oops, sorry everyone I'll put the code and we'll talk about it at the end of class too. Okay. Um I just I, I do this when you're not there just because then people can read this. <laughs> so there's Lorelei's website and Instagram and the Leighton House Instagram, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then um also I'm just including the names of the books that Lorelai usually gives that we gave last week, um, but you might want again this week. Uh, Louise, they're the buds, the, the rosebuds. There's some space in my design above the middle. Okay. Got it. Okay, so Sarah is going to share. Um, what are we going to do next? We're actually going to do some painting techniques. Actually, we have half an hour left. I think that's best so that we don't get, you know, kind of jammed into not having enough time. Um, and I'm going to do the pomegranate. Uh, leaves and stem because that's a little different and then oh, and if you could we'll do the great there's a few people who are asking for that <laughs> about the competition thing no sorry the grapes I was going to do the competition next <laughs> ha ha yeah I, I will do the grapes the grapes um yeah grapes aren't so so out there um but yeah, I'll get to those, don't worry. Um, so just quickly, and I'll mention this again at the end of class, for those of you who haven't taken other classes other than these Damascene classes with me, um, I have been, while I'm building up the material for my second book, I have been offering the online classes for the material that I am putting in the book. And some of the stuff, you know, won't be taught and it'll be a, um, you know, a surprise for when the book comes out. So on my website right now, I can't remember, there must be more than, I think there's 15 classes or 12 classes, I can't remember. There's also a watercolor, an introduction to watercolor class. And there is um, an intensive ISNIC class as well. So this little kind of discount uh, it's just for you guys who have taken this class with me. It's a 20% discount um, off of everything but the gift cards, obviously. So if you wanted to get something for, for someone as a gift, that's also available. Um, so the link is in the chat. It's also in the email that you guys would have gotten from uh, me today that has all of the class information. And yeah, so basically it's almost exactly the same as 
Um, when I'm talking about the recorded classes, you can use, um, if you were to get a gift card, it can be for, for future classes also. But if you were to get some of the recorded classes, you get the exact same of what I do. So you have your Google Drive that's filled with all of the handouts, uh, photo references, presentations, class recordings, absolutely everything. Um, and so, yeah, that I believe I put it for one week. And um, yeah, so it'd be lovely um, if you guys can do some more courses with me. So for the rest of Two thousand and one private classroom for the rest of this year, but there are classes that are going to happen um, about different mehra patterns with scripts and scribes. Which, if Anika, you're listening, I got your email. I'm so sorry. I'm going to answer it. My apologies. Um, and then I have another class that is about imperial fabrics, and then later maybe March, April. Um, if I still have all my legs and arms <laughs> by the time all of this is done, um, I will do a class on the sun, the moon, and the stars in Islamic class. Please repeat. Whoa, please repeat what? Um, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll get into sure it at the end of the class. <laughs> yeah, um, also in that email, there is um, an email of where to kind of send all of your, your pictures that you want to send. It's damascustiles at gmail.com. Um, basically because my, my email inbox is just flooded at the moment still, even though I caught up earlier this week. So damascustiles at gmail.com. You can put finished work. You can put in progress. It doesn't matter to me. And we're going to put something together, me and Leighton House to kind of demonstrate what all of you guys have been doing. So. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Pawan. Yes, Pawan has done a few classes with me, I think during the, the uh, Turkish Patterns series. So it's good to hear that you enjoyed them. That's, that's, the, uh, <laughs> that's the point, right? Um, here is also just before I move them. This is just using the black outline here, this here. This is actually an Andalusian pattern. I did a much larger tile for a commission and this was a test. Which company name was the black outline? This is an Andalusian uh, pattern. No, no, Sorry. the black outline. Was it a particular brand or just any? No, I make it myself. Ah, I see. Okay, sorry, I missed that bit. <laughs> no, I learned from my teacher, and there's all there's a lot of stuff I will share, but there's some stuff that, like the Colonel's know. secret recipe. Exactly. Okay, so now, ah, oh, thank you very much, uh, Monique. Yes, Monique has has taken quite a few classes with me too, so. It's nice to have uh, faces to, you know, what's it called? Friendly faces. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to get into a little bit of painting. The plate is symmetrical. So you'll just, for me right now, and for you guys, I did it half half. So we have grapes on one side and we have the motifs on the other side. Mine looks a little bit different than this one here. Just a little bit different. This one looks nicer actually, <laughs> the second one. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna do some painting techniques here just to kind of help you guys out. So if you have colored pencils or um, watercolor, then please get those ready. And let's do a little bit of painting here. I use um, uh, I use an enamel plate. It works really well. I'm starting to grow out of these little things. It just doesn't make sense anymore. So that 
I am basically using all of the color out of these until, until it's done. And then I will fully move to my enamel plate. Okay. So I'm using watercolor. Sorry, I just heard something fall downstairs and I'm curious what happened. Henry? <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't hear my husband yell. So, <laughs> so I don't know, maybe he did something. I'm not sure. Uh, my apologies, my utmost apologies. I'm just looking at this pomegranate here and I realize it does not have a stem. And I'm gonna add that now. Okay, so I'm just erasing some of these little bits around here first. This is also something, um, depending on how heavy your watercolor wash is, if it's really quite heavy, that means that probably there's quite a bit of gum Arabic. Um, so if you try to erase your pencil lines off of it, it's basically sealed there for life. Um, so lightly uh, erase them so that you don't have that issue. So basically with this, we do this kind of a line. It comes up, oh, can't even see that. No, it's not too clear actually on that one. Okay, so we come up like so. Yep. We do another one and then you kind of go into that surface like that. Same on the other side. Like that. And then we have these kind of sprigs coming out of leaves. And inside here, we put little teardrops kind of. This basically breaks up the space and allows because we're working, well, technically we're working on ceramic and it gives us a chance to put in a different color or to have the white space. And I'm gonna put in a little tricky leaf here. I think my teacher would, if she saw me do this, she'd maybe smack my hand, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Yeah, like so, okay. All right, so for now, for our pomegranate, I showed you the scallops. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do an all over color. And then, um, then a pattern on top. I'm looking at the time, is it gonna dry in time? Well, we're gonna pray that it does. 20 minutes. Yeah, we'll see. If I put the heat on maybe. All right, so nice kind of fluffy brush. For this one, maybe I'll take a little bit of a purpley color. Yeah. And so I've just kind of, if you remember a lot of the, on the plate we saw today, the mauve was quite subdued. Sometimes they're more eggplanty colored. So I'm gonna do it in the middle. <laughs> Neither of the colors I just mentioned. There we go. Like so. Okay. So leave that for now. That color is not coming up so well, but um, let me see. Okay. 
Okay. The color is actually very even. It's the lighting that's making it look quite bizarre. It's actually a very nice even tone. But also to answer that question again, um, with watercolor, you're always gonna get some variation. If you look in my pomegranate here, like if, if something's nature is to be one way and you're trying to make it flat and even, it's, you know, if you're going against its nature, it's just gonna give you headaches. So what I try to do is I just kind of try to go with whatever it's doing at that point in time, which I guess is kind of a good lesson for life in general, isn't it? All of the lessons you learn while doing watercolor. So here I'm getting some, a nice kind of olivey green color. I'm putting in some of the leaves here. And I'll come back. I usually do glazing. If you take my watercolor class, then you know what glazing is. Basically, you're putting a color down, you're allowing it to dry, and then you take another color, similar or not, and you lay a very thin layer on top. And so this is a process, which is why it's very hard to, to show the painting that, that I got quite a few emails about because this is something that, you know, you kind of play around with and fiddle with for sometimes even days. Okay, so let's do one of these um, rosebuds. I'm taking my green, actually, let me see here. Lorelai, just for people who haven't taken your courses before, what watercolors do you recommend? Um, I use a, a big variation, but if you're just starting out, the Windsor and Newton Cotman series, which is for students, is a really good one. Um, they do pans, which is like this, you know, little pans of color. And they also do different sizes of tubes. Cotman with one. It auto corrected my cotman to cotton. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was you. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> I put it in and it, it just it auto corrected annoyingly. <laughs> um, so also to to remember, like some of the ones I like the most, uh, like I'm I'm a professional, right? I I'm an illustrator. Uh, I'm an artist. I've been doing this for a while. So some of the ones I use, they're, they're top end just because generally the more expensive the watercolor, the longer it's going to last because it has much more amount of pigment inside of it um, than something like the Cotman. But the Cotman series is fantastic for beginners. Really, really it is. I don't want you to think you're buying crap or something like that. You're not. But um, with the professional versus the student, it's it's just like anything. Um, you know, you do get what you pay for. So in the beginning, when you're trying to learn, you know, the Windsor and Newton Cotman series, they are fantastic for color vibrancy, for playing, for all of those things. When you're working with the professional series, when when you're working with certain colors, unless you are really comfortable with it, it's going to be um, it's going to be difficult uh, until you get really comfortable with them. So some of the ones I really, really like are the Holbein. It's a Japanese brand. Uh, and then here is the Windsor and Newton Professional Series. I also use um, uh, Schminke, which is, uh, these two are both kind of top of the line. They're quite expensive. Uh, and I use them sparingly and for specific colors. <laughs> like a lot of my my turquoise, it's coming from from Holbein because I find that their colors are you know the most vibrant and most kind of beautiful. There's also another brand too, Rembrandt brand, which also their greens I really like. I get a lot of, uh, and they're these pinks here, pinks and purples are really nice from them too. here. 
I looked at the entire collection of Holbein watercolors and I quickly closed <laughs> the internet browser. <laughs> I will, I will work myself one day towards that. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's, oh yeah, sorry, getting back to the, the what's it, we'll call it, the um, bud. So exterior is gonna be green. And then the interior, it could be blue, it could be purple. In this case, if you want to veer away from, from the traditional colors, I mean, you could get some pink in there too. Like so. And for this one, I would def, I'm like for myself, I would definitely come back to this green again. Yes, Daniel Smith are nice too. There's another one. Oh yeah, I'm using Kiritaki. I just, I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, I use Kiritaki a lot to get, they're kind of in between gouache and watercolor, these ones. You can see they're like, they look like colorful chocolate. Yeah, this is fantastic. For brushes, oh, I don't know anymore. Um, I have this one brand I really like. Uh, it is called uh, Rubloff, R-O-U-B-L-O-F-F. -F. Um, I use them for a lot. They come with this really nice wooden handle. Um, I really prefer those. I will not buy uh, Da Vinci Kolinsky brushes anymore. I'm sorry if anyone works for them, will not do it. I am not happy with the quality, especially how much you pay. It's like 10 pounds for like uh, a size one brush and then it's just, you know, no good. I also like ProArt, ProArt is nice. Now there's also really some fantastic lines of synthetic brushes too. Um, I don't use synthetic basically because I invested in um, natural brushes during my master's. And so because I've taken care of them, I haven't had to buy new ones. But I think ethically, I should probably look at the route of, you know, synthetic brushes for sure. So here we go. This green one here, I am using the Kuretake. And it's automatically more opaque. I'm not a purist when it comes to um, my materials. I like to find what works best. Oh, I'm not over time yet, so getting this. You can see it's such a big difference. Look at how, sorry, let me move this down a bit. There's just one request whether you could just very quickly do the grapes before the end. Uh, um, if not, we can always, they can always look at the document you're gonna send out. Yeah, yes. absolutely, absolutely. Because um, the page is wet. But the, the grapes are, as you can see here, um, yeah, I'm gonna do a detailed coloring of the pomegranate. I will do an explana explanation of the, the grapes. Don't worry, Angela, I'll send that. Um, it's gonna be in the handouts. It might, take, um, it might take an extra day or two to get it there. Let's see here. Okay, now let's see. If I can get, is this dry? Kind of. So for this one, what I can do, I can do the spirals. So basically if you're new to watercolor and you wanna have it darker, the, the same color, you just add less water.
you can try. It might come off. Uh, so the question was, sorry, Sarah, can you read the question? Yeah, so the question was, am I correct that after I color it and paint it, you can erase the pencil? And I think you'd said earlier on that if you, depending on the paint, you may not be able to. Yeah, so if you have like quite a few thick layers of watercolor on top, it's gonna be really difficult. Um, so if you've used a lighter color, like a yellow or a white, you're just gonna see that forever. Um, if it is- What size brush are you using there? I think it's a two, that's a two. And I'm keeping my brush vertical. It's not on the side. Okay, so if I go any further, it's going to start bleeding more because it hasn't uh, fully dried down there. I'm going to add a little bit more into these areas here. So stylistically, what normally happens is we leave a little bit of a buffer between that line here. So we leave a little bit of a white space underneath the black kind of petal line. What are you frowning at? My, I'm not sure what's going on on my, I got a message on my phone camera from Zoom telling me to unmute myself. I don't know. No, no, you're fine. It's, uh, it's coming out okay. So this purple that you've made, was it, was it one of the straight purples from, uh, from the, from the, the It's color, a straight purple. Make? It's dioxamine purple. Oh, Laura, Dioxine. I'm going to try to spell Sorry, it. Sorry, dioxine purple. <laughs> D-I-O-X-A-Z-I-N-E. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> it's the standard purple, actually, generally. Yeah, this, this color isn't really mixed with anything. One person's okay. asking what you would recommend as the next class they take. With me? Yep. Or maybe the next uh, one to watch the I video, mean, what do you think? Let me see. I want to see who asked the question, actually. It was um, Louise. Oh, I don't know. It depends on where your interests lie, because I have some geometry classes, and I have some... Um, I have some uh, motif classes, so it depends. Um, okay, so I will, I promise I will make a handout that's explaining these grapes here. My apologies. Um, but I had so many questions about painting that I wanted to just, you know, uh, nip that in the bud. So just uh, thank you so much, all of you for joining. We really, really did not uh, even think that the, um, that we would get so many of you in the class. Um, uh, I'll answer that one from Hafsa in a second. Just remind yeah, me to answer. Um, so, uh, you know, last week there were almost 400 people signed up for the class and almost 200 people attended the class uh, who, who had actually signed up. So it's incredible. Um, so really thank you guys for, for joining. I really appreciate it. I know in the new year, there's gonna be some new classes. Um, I'm not exactly sure the topics yet. Uh, we're still discussing those and 
um, also with my own classes too, uh, that I have through my own website, um, we'll be advertising those hopefully in December. So anyways, um, yeah, really appreciate it. And you guys have been wonderful. And um, one second. Yes, I am crowdfunding for my book. I need to get my behind in order and get everything <laughs> organized. I'm meeting with different suppliers for the different rewards. Um, we are gonna do a Patreon and crowdfunding kind of double tiered system for the book. The book is gonna be called Surface Patterns. I have already hired the designer. He's already working and dealing with my uh, type A, very detail oriented self. So that's going well. Um, so we're going to have lots to share in 2021, fingers crossed. Um, and yeah, we have your emails. Um, so I will, you know, through MailChimp, we'll let all of you know what's going on. And if you are in a position to help out with the crowdfunding or by, you know, by the classes, that would be great. If not, you know, just showing up to the classes that are available to students um, at no charge is also another, you know, fantastic moral support, obviously, too. Um, and there's a request to see the cat. Uh, I think maybe you all's not mine. <laughs> The cat, the cat is downstairs, unfortunately. And I also wanted to thank, um, I wanted to thank uh, Leighton House for letting me have, you know, run of the roost basically, and uh, let me kind of come up with lots of different uh, ideas for the classes. It's been, um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I am going to, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with the, uh, I've made kind of a map. Um, let me see here. I've made, I'm not sure how high I can get this. I have made kind of um, a map in a way of all of the stuff that we did in these classes and everything's kind of connected to itself. Also, there, as I said in the beginning of the class, there is a coloring page, um, which I included in today's handouts. So check that out. I don't know how far this can go. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if I can change it. Does that get a little bit more? Um, actually, it's kind of frozen a bit. Um... Yep, no, now we're good, now we're good, yeah. Ooh, that's so nice. Yeah, so everything's connected together. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna talk about it, I'm sure, with Leighton House and with Charlotte. Um, so everything, I don't know what, what made me do this, but I wanted to do something different. So uh, yeah, we're gonna figure out what we can do with that. Maybe we'll, have them available as a print or something. I'm not sure yet. Late not this size, paper. a little bit more manageable. No, late um, paper. That's what you should do. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Did Charlotte? Did you hear that? Late in house wrapping paper. Or I'm not sure if Anna's in the class right now or Claudia. <laughs> but uh, yeah, wrapping paper. <laughs> um, and then recyclable um, and compostable, of course. Yeah, yeah, she said, I heard. Um, and the one other thing, uh, so yeah, um, damascustiles at gmail.com, send in your um, in process finished, we're going to compile everything you have two weeks and uh, to send those in, then the coloring page. So please enjoy those while you're in various forms of quarantine. If that's what keeps you from getting COVID, I have done my due diligence. And then the third thing is, so question about the, the, the discount code. So it's only good for one use, but if you buy 10 classes, you'll get 20% off of all of them. If you buy two, if you buy one, doesn't matter, 20% off. Um, and, 
Uh, yeah, I'll answer that in a second. And, um, but it's only good for one usage. Then the other thing is, yes, tag me on Instagram, no problem. Um, I just can't guarantee because so many of you tag me, I can't guarantee 100% it's gonna get in just because there's a lot of you. Safest way is to email damascustiles at gmail.com. Um, and that is just in processed or finished work, doesn't matter. Um, is there a date for that, by the way, a date for the, by which you want things up? Uh, sharing with me or emailed to me? Yeah. Oh, do you remember we sort of said there was a bit of a, you know, we'd love to see everybody's finished ones. Oh, yeah. So you have two weeks to send that to me. To two weeks. DamascusTiles at gmail.com. Um, for the discount, I believe it's one week. If I get a few people complaining that they want it a little longer, I might be nice. I might be. <laughs> um, other than that, um, thank, oh, geez, I can't believe I was just about to like forget. Thank you so much, Sarah. Really, I, I'm in debt to, you know, <laughs> my sanity, my level of gray hair being kept to a minimum. <laughs> and um, yeah, I really, really appreciate it. And I know everyone appreciates it. Pleasure. I get lots I really of emails <laughs> saying that they really enjoy you. Um, you no, you will have one week uh, for the recording of this class. Yes, round of applause for Sarah. Unfortunately, we can't hear. Um, Shay, uh, I guess we can open people's videos, but I think opening... Um, uh, I should be able to, hold on. Please do your series on tiles and plates. My next series on tiles and plates? Oh boy, uh, that's, that's a big class. <laughs> Yes, actual ones. Yeah, I mean, that's something to look at too, definitely. definitely. Actually, people should be able to unmute themselves now. Yeah. She says, frantically checking the notes, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, wonderful, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, Leighton House. I'm looking forward to what we're gonna do in 2021. And yeah, have a wonderful evening, stay safe, stay healthy. And I'm excited to see your finished works. And I'm gonna get this up hopefully by the weekend. All right, see you very much. Hope you can join me in classes soon. Bye everyone. I'm not coughing, no. Okay, right, gotta leave, gotta find the thing. <laughs>